In this video, we will explore citizens and co-creation. How do citizens co-create the urban fabric? What forms of co-creation can we distinguish? First, we will look at the urban fabric and how it changes. Then we will see that different forms of change relate to different forms of co-creation. First of all, there are a number of socio-technical systems in the urban fabric the water system, the mobility system, the food system, and so on. All these systems bring together infrastructure, technologies, and human actions. Even though social technical systems may be relatively stable, they are always changing. In the case of sustainability transitions, they change fundamentally and on purpose. They change, for example, when people start doing something in a different way, when they take a bike instead of a bus. But they also change when a company drops shared bikes in a city or when a city council designs a new subway. All changes in the urban fabric play out in the particular political context of a city. City politics matter for understanding when and how urban sustainability transitions come about. They are, for example, about low emission zones for cars and other policies to improve the urban air quality, about subsidies for citizens to put solar panels on their roofs, or about whether a company is or is not allowed to put its bikes in the city centre. As you see, transitions in the urban fabric have a political component. Let's now have a look at co-creation. Co-creation is about all kinds of engagement of citizens and other stakeholders with the sustainability transitions in their cities. We argue that these engagements can be divided into two fundamental forms. The co-creation of city politics and the co-creation of socio-technical systems. Let's first have a look at the first dimension, co-creating uh, co city politics. Now, politics is a difficult term that can refer to many things. We say that politics is on the one hand about official politics and policy making. For example, elections, referenda, uh, the city council and local mun municipalities that make and implement policies and regulations. Citizens and other stakeholders are co-creating these official politics in many ways. For example, when they vote for a political party, but also when they are invited at a stakeholder meeting to give their input on a new policy. Politics, on the other hand, also refers to more mundane things. Discussing politics in a pub, expressing your opinion on Facebook, or buying organic food as a political consumer. By their actions, opinions and discussions, citizens and other stakeholders are co-creating the politics in their city. Their approval or rejection of particular ideas, arguments and developments do matter for the official politics of their cities. Now, the second fundamental dimension of co-creation is about co-creating social technical systems. Citizens co-create social technical systems in their everyday lives by means of their actions, their choices, their routines, and their daily practices. For example, they co-create the food system by what they shop, what they eat, how they dispose of any leftovers. When citizens only buy organic food at the farmer's market and not in the supermarket, you can understand that th this as an effort by them to co-create an alternative, an organic food system. At the same time, this is a partial withdrawal from the conventional food system. Co-creation in this respect refers to the agency that people always exert in their daily life. They go for a particular alternative and not for something else because the alternative matters to them and it fits best their goals and aspirations. However, 
there is a second form of co-creation of social technical systems. When citizens are invited by other stakeholders to consider an alternative that brings along potential changes in their routines. We see this kind of co-creation activities during co-design sessions in, in living labs, in a, city, a citizen science project and at a stakeholder meeting and during focus group, for example. These co-creation initiatives are often focused on specific innovations, the development of a certain technology, the design of a new process, the implementation of an alternative infrastructure, and so on. Note that it makes a difference who is behind the invitation, whether you are invited by your neighbors, a company, a government, an NGO, or a research institute. To conclude, these four forms of co-creation highlight four ways in which citizens are involved with other stakeholders in the co-creation of their cities. I hope this framework helps you in analyzing and interpreting the forms of co-creation that you come across. With these four different forms of co-creation, we show a rather broad understanding of co-creation that is not restricted to citizens' participation in formal decision-making or in the design of a new product. For us, co-creation is fundamentally about the agency that citizens and other stakeholders use to make their cities more sustainable. This agency includes all their actions, their opinions, choices and desires that have a consequence for how urban sustainability transitions do or do not develop. With all their different agencies, stakeholders are always co-creating the urban fabric. Ordinary citizens like you and me are at the center of these ongoing co-creation processes.